Hey what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and welcome back to the 38th Slime Keep devlog. In this devlog, I made Steve achievements for the game, as well as fixed a ton of small issues. Also, if you're new here, Slime Keep is a fast-paced roguelike where you must kill and capture slimes to stop the corruption that has infected your land. But before I get into the video, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Opera GX. Opera GX is not your average boring browser, and is specifically made for gamers. For example, every app you may need is conveniently placed on the sidebar so you can easily get notifications and use apps such as Twitter and Discord and so on, allowing you to browse with all your favorite apps integrated right into the sidebar. And they also have this GX control panel to allow you to easily monitor and limit RAM and CPU usage in your browser. Opera GX also has native integration with AI apps such as ChatGPT and ChatSonic, allowing you to easily summarize articles or find related content. I can also just highlight any text and get a bunch of AI suggestions, which is really neat. And ChatGPT and ChatSonic are also right there on the sidebar if you ever need to use them. Finally, if you're hesitant to switch due to the pain that switching browsers causes, fear no more because Opera GX has a handy import tool which allows you to quickly import all your settings from your previous browser to Opera GX, and is also compatible with every Google Chrome extension. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, make sure to check out Opera GX and use my link below to download it today. So to start off, I got straight into making achievements for the game. Years in Bean, in the past few years of Slime Keep, I've quite literally gotten hundreds of comments of people saying that I should add achievements to the game, and I just figured that now would be a somewhat appropriate time to do so. So to start off, I found this tutorial from OroDev on how to add Steam achievements to Unity games. And quickly into watching this tutorial, I realized that first, I would need to configure the Steamworks API into my game so that I could actually communicate to Steam. Oro recommended this wrapper called Face Punch, which seems to essentially simplify the process of working with the Valve Steamwork API, making the process more streamlined with Unity specifically. And to set up this API was incredibly simple inside of Unity. I just made this Steam integration class, initialized the app with this one line of code, and then just continuously communicate with Steam in the update function. I guess I always thought this process would be really complex to actually be able to communicate with Steam inside of Unity, but it really wasn't at all, especially using Face Punch, which was pretty nice. Anyways, now to make this achievement logic, I followed the rest of the tutorial and created a few extremely simple functions for handling achievement unlocking and testing. In game, you can now see I made this simple test achievement and triggered it once the game started, which seemed to be working. So now with that logic out of the way, I needed to draft out what achievements I wanted to add to the game and how the player would unlock them. I started to ask my Discord server for their ideas for achievements because more minds is better than one, and I got tons of great ideas for achievements to add. I narrowed down the list in this Google Doc and made a few of my own, which was pretty neat. Then I hopped into Steamworks, which is the developer place where all Steams are uploaded and configured if you don't know, and added in slots for all these achievements. And this was a great start, but we still needed logos for these achievements. So I spent a few days in Aceprite and ended up making 24 unique achievement icons for all the achievements in the game. Then I hopped into Photoshop and added in a grayscale effect to all the achievements for the locked state. Back into Steamworks I was, where I uploaded all these logos, and then proceeded to journey around my codebase to get the right achievements unlocked at the right times. This really wasn't too difficult of a process, as for the most part, all I had to do was plop in this if statement with the correct achievement name in the right place, and boom, achievement added. So I did that for all the achievements in the game, and boom, Slimekeep now has achievements. And speaking of achievements, I heard there's this secret Slimekeep achievement that you will get if you wishlist Slimekeep on Steam. I'm totally not making this up, so make sure to click the link in the description and wishlist Slimekeep. Anyways, with that done, I was kind of struggling to think of other important things to work on in the game. It just felt like the game was really starting to come together. I just need to spend a bunch of time fixing bugs and gathering feedback on how the game actually functions as a whole. So I headed to my Discord server and made a post where people can apply to be a beta tester for the game. After a few days, we got quite a few submissions for me to sort through, and eventually I managed to sort down the group to around 30 playtesters, but I just wanted to keep this group pretty small at this point. But after forming this small group, I gave them all access to Slime Keep, and I kid you not, within a matter of hours, these playtesters found at least a hundred bugs and issues in the game for me to fix. Now, some of these reports were duplicates, but still, this initial surge was really, really overwhelming at the time. So I had no other choice but to dive in the deep end and get straight to fixing a ton of the issues in the game. To start off, for some reason in the tutorial, whenever shooting, the weapon's recoil would push the player in the direction that they shot, not push them away, which looked really weird. I still don't really understand why this happened, but I managed to fix it up. Another weird issue with the weapon was that sometimes if the player shot and immediately clicked the reload button after, the player would not be able to switch weapons again. I noticed that the appropriately named can switch weapon variable would say false when it should have returned to true like normal. So inside of the weapon reloading function, I just added in this one line to set the variable to true after reloading, and yeah, that fixed it. Now for the next bug, let's play a little game. Here is the bug. 
As you can see, once closing the Book of Slime in the cutscene for the final boss fight, the player could move around, kind of? Now, I want you to guess why might this happen? A, the Book of Slime pushes the player upon closing it, moving the player. B, the player's move variable gets reset to true after closing the book. Or C, the player's can shoot variable gets reset to true after closing the book. Do you know the answer? Well, spoiler alert, it's C. If you notice in the video, the player still can't move, but upon closing the book, it resets the player's can shoot variable to true, allowing the player to be able to shoot their weapon and push them across the map due to recoil. Now, this was an extremely simple fix, just by not letting the player open the book of slime while the cutscene is playing. Another simple fix was with this charge weapon, where sometimes it would get stuck on this yellow material if the player stopped charging it midway. To fix this, I just politely asked the weapon to stop doing this, and surprisingly, it was pretty receptive to my request and stopped doing that. Moving on, one of the playtesters found a weird bug where the player captured all the slimes in a room, then the last slime the player tried to capture would not capture at all, and throw a bunch of errors. Now, this is a prime example of a small issue making itself look much more scary than it actually is. In this case, there was nothing wrong with the capturing system, but rather this system here, where rooms have a chance to drop an item after clearing them. Essentially, for some reason, I made it use the location of the first slime ball dropped in a room as the location to spawn this item drop. So I switched around this to not rely on the presence of slime balls, as once capturing all the slimes in the room, there were no slime balls to go off of, causing this error and for the capture to fail. But with that fixed, I also noticed another issue where sometimes upon dying and hitting the restart button, the scene transition would kind of just bug out and not really work. To illustrate why this bug occurred, here's an amazing drawing I made. Essentially, this is the death screen, and once a player died, it would move down to show the player. Now, once after the animation was finished, the game would freeze to not allow the player to mess around and stuff. Then, once pressing the restart button on this death screen, it would call the restart function to restart the game. But the issue here was that the player could sometimes press the button before the death screen finished animating down, forcing the game to freeze itself. Now, this was a very small issue with a simple fix of checking at the time scale of zero before allowing the player to restart. But I just think it's interesting to look into how some of these bugs may occur in the first place. Anyways, for the next bug, another playtester noticed that sometimes the player could fail a capture, and if they continued to hold down the mouse, they could still continue to lose their battery ammo. And like many other bugs, this was just a simple one line if statement fix. Moving on, we had a slight visual issue here with the boat room where the player could sometimes see the edges of the room. So I made a few slight changes to the edge of the room, added in these waves to ease the effect. Next, someone pointed out how all these items in the computer shop had descriptions, except for the random weapon, so I just added the name of the weapon here when the player hovered over it. Now moving on, we had a bunch of bugs related to the Slime King, so let's go rapid fire bug fixing for the next 30 seconds. First, we had this bug where once opening the Book of Slime, the boss health bar would display above the book, so I fixed that up pretty easily. Next, in this Slime King attack where the king spawns all these slimes, the player could just continuously capture slime to be immune from damage. So I simply disallowed the player from capturing while fighting the king. And on the topic of this attack, it was just way too hard. So I tuned down the spawning rates of these slimes quite a bit to make it more manageable. And another playtester also pointed out that if the player dies while fighting the Slime King, the day displayed on the death screen would be day 17, which is just wrong. So I hard-coded in this case, so now the text will display the keep, and that was all I had now for the Slime King. Now, back to your regularly scheduled bugs, when releasing slimes into the slime pin, the capture gun ammo text would sometimes display as infinite, so I fixed that. Next up, some people recommended that you should be able to rebind the dash to the right-click button, which the game wouldn't allow you to do for some reason. Now, I couldn't find the cause of this issue and why you couldn't rebind a key to right-click, so I just decided to hard-code in the dash to also be able to be triggered by right-click, in case the player wanted to dash like that. Another annoying bug was this, where the player could sometimes continue to be able to move after opening the sliminator panel, causing them not to be able to close the panel, essentially being softlocked. Frankly, all I had to do here was make sure to freeze the player upon opening the panel, but that was nice to get out of the way. And another thing that was nice to get out of the way was this small visual issue where once picking up battery ammo for the capture gun, the text would update, but not the actual ammo bar. Again, this was just a very simple fix, but it's these kinds of small things that always seem to slip by me. Now, let's head back to the Slime King for a second, because one of my playtesters found this exploit where on the Slime King's lunge attack, the player could just stay in precise locations to be safe from the lunges. There were a few ways I could fix this, but I just opted for the simple route to add a box collider on the edges of the king during this attack to damage the player if they try to do this. Moving on, I noticed that once using these buttons in the table of contents in the Book of Slime, some of the page flipping afterwards would look a little weird, and a page or two would end up on the wrong layer. This was just a fairly standard fix as I tweaked around with some of the page layer values. But well, something that didn't seem so standard was how the player could absolutely break the game by entering these teleportation puddles and spamming tab to open the pause menu or book of slime. 
Again, this looked way worse than it really was, as all I really had to do was prevent the player from being able to open the Book of Slime while teleporting. Next up, there was this slight oddity where after opening and closing the browser inside of the computer, the player could press in the top right corner to open and close the browser. This was due to the X button in the browser apparently not being deactivated after closing the browser window, so I just fixed that up. And the next thing I worked on was not a bug, but I just wanted to more clearly represent to the player that sleeping and progressing on to the next day saved the game. So I made the simple text fade in every time the player sleeps just to communicate this idea to the player. And speaking of sleeping, after sleeping, the player typically takes a journey outside their house. But sometimes after trying to re-enter the house, I noticed that if the player dashes while entering, the house inside area just wouldn't trigger. This seemed to be because the trigger area was too thin, so sometimes the game just wouldn't pick up that the player entered the trigger if they're moving too fast, so I increased the size of the trigger and we were good. Next up, there were quite a few issues with the weapons inventory page in the Book of Slime. For example, it wouldn't update if the player dropped a weapon, some of the sprites were also squished, and it just wasn't too necessary overall. So I decided to scrap this page and make way for a new pause page that would give the player the option to restart the game, quit the game, or go back to the home menu. After a bit of setting things up, this page was ready, and it felt really good to finally have in the game. And now, finally, the last thing for me to fix was this spiky skin upgrade, which would create a burst of projectiles once the player took damage. I just got a few complaints that this attack made some people's computers lag, which I can totally see, so I just modified it to make every slime in the room automatically take some damage. And with that said, that's all for this devlog. Just so you guys know, I've been working a ton recently on fixing all these bugs and issues in the game, and believe it or not, there is so much small stuff that I've been working on over these past few weeks that I haven't even included in this devlog. And just so you guys know, while there still will be some new content added to the game, it just feels like Slime Keep is finally getting to that point where a lot of the work going forward will be bug fixes and tweaks to the gameplay and that kind of stuff. I know it might not be the most entertaining, but hey, that's just game dev, and I want to make sure the game releases in a good state. So thanks for watching, subscribe if you liked the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.